I need all the men to pull up. Pull up to this video because we're gonna talk about some things because um, I need some healing to happen. I need y'all to sit with them feelings. And based off of these Nick Cannon videos, Tyrese, Cam, and some of these other NFL players, we got some things to get into, why don't we? But first, I am Denise Bray, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe, join the family, hit that notification bell, okay? Cause we can get into some things. Now looking at some of the things that came out this last week, the Dr. Bryant video, Tyrese being on Club Shay Shay, looking at all these things, Nick Cannon, what do all these men have in common? On the outside, they are black men with influence. They are affluent. They have lives that some people might dream of, maybe want to be close to, maybe try and make their own lives look similar to theirs. But in reality, all these men are functioning out of survival mode and a scarcity mindset. And I wonder about their childhoods, their relations with their fathers, the foundation, and are some of them carrying parental wounds that are now influencing how they show up in relationships. Most recently, you see that with Cam talking about his own childhood. And I don't think we talked enough or looked at it from the perspective of Cam functioning out of scarcity and Nick Cannon. Both these men have multiple children, okay? Multiple, I want to say wives, um, mothers of their children. Let's, let's say mothers of their children. We see all that. But we see that all of these women only get bits and pieces out of fear, okay? And that is how sometimes that survival mode, that fear of abandonment, that fear of letting somebody in close to me, um, the emotional instability, okay? Emotion, being emotionally stunted. Those are all signs of survival mode. Those are all signs of how my trauma is showing up in my dynamic. And I work with a lot of women who function out of survival mode, but we don't talk enough about men and how that shows up. We focus so much on women being in survival mode, but a lot of men, the signs are often not the same. And you have to look at it at these men. When they were children, what did the world say? You have to always show up masculine. You have to always show up strong. Don't be crying. None of that pussy-ish is the quotes I've heard. Or if you cry, then you, the F word. Okay, so all the time they're having to, it's ingrained, it's, in, it's been conditioned in them that they can only show up strong. And with that strongness, by your side, it's always gonna be a woman. Okay, you have to always be with someone who looks a certain way. And I wonder about Cam, you know, him, having these different relationships, these different children. I wonder about him and what he saw growing up from his own father. Could it have been that he saw his father with different women? Was he visiting some of these relationships? What did he witness that now he's like, oh, I have been conditioned and learned that women can only get so close. I can't really let them in. But his fear of abandonment, another symptom of being in survival mode, only keeps him over here. And not only does that affect the women that he's with, but also his children. I think the children also just get bits and pieces similar to Nick Cannon. They're continuing to foster one thing, say one thing, but their actions speak another. And I think both these men are functioning out of scarcity. Okay. A scarcity mindset coming from not having a lot the fear of going back to that. I think at one time, um, Nick Cannon said he wanted to have the most hours of being on TV or something. So that he was trying to break that record. And also he has some serious health, you know, autoimmune chronic illness that we really don't talk about that gets suppressed, that gets forgotten about because of the limelight. People focus so much on the multiple children, but the men behind that, we don't talk about enough how these men are in survival mode. And I say the same thing about Tyrese. Tyrese is also in survival mode, but maybe his circumstances, his relationships don't look the same, but how he is functioning does, okay? He is functioning from a place of having to pretend like everything is okay. Now, 
from the eyes of the media and probably women too, when you compare all three of these men, you might say Nick and Cam are functioning high and you might say Tyrese is low functioning, but it's only because of those lifestyles and I think probably seeing Tyrese be more emotional. Some people feel like he cries too much. Part of the negative toxicness of men not being vulnerable is the, oh, he, he cries too much. So what is enough? Okay. Who says what is too much? Mm -hmm. And so when you see a man trying to get in touch with his feelings, what do people say? Oh, he must be gay. Oh, we're in a sassy man apocalypse. That's too much for me. Am I lying? That is what I often hear is that I see it online, the weaponization of men's vulnerability. And we want, we say we want more emotional intelligence. We want men to be attuned to us and show up for us. But do you really want the emotional capacity of that? Or do you feel like men can only show up and provide materialistic, tangible things. And once they are not able to show up and provide those tangible things, they often get thrown away. And looking at once again, the interviews, the podcast, <laughs> so much of it is in our faces. <laughs> but I think all these men are stuck in survival mode. And it's also pouring to the next generation those kids also functioning in survival mode. It's another way that we see generational trauma showing up from their past. And now they're pouring that into their children and they're mirroring to these kids that this is what it's supposed to be like. And this is the life you're supposed to live. And now, once again, on the outside, it looks like everything is okay. It looks like they have the life, but what's beneath the surface. And when you do see men showing up, being family figures, being role models, it's laughed at. Look at the Russells. It's laughed at. It's joked about. It's weaponized. A lot of times by other men, which is interesting. Okay. Because in a lot of ways, I feel like the media is trying to foster men to tap into mental health, men to tap into vulnerability, to work on and heal through things. And you would think it is to... I don't want to say become like Russell, but the result is to be a family figure to show up for your children. So maybe it is like, it's like a Russell, but nobody's saying that the imagery, the outline of what a Russell is. And once again, it's only what we see on, on media and TV. I don't know Russell as a personal, as a, a regular person. Okay. But I feel like the foundation is like, let's help, help men heal. Let's get through mental health. Let's, you know, have men be emotionally intelligent work on the foundation of themselves, but are we really ready for that? And do we foster environments that really give men that? Because when I work with men, a lot of them are functioning from a place of thing that they saw growing up, where that's street violence, where that's their father being an adulterer, where that's their parents divorcing. They really don't grow up to see what the world eventually wants them to heal into. So how do you create a space? How do you tell men to be like something they never seen before? And also does the world create a space where men can be like that? I feel like men oftentimes are plagued by being financial suitors, by racism, but there's not a lot of space for men to be vulnerable and to find therapists who won't laugh at them, make fun of them. I have had clients, I've heard them say that they've gone to male therapists who made them feel worse about the thing that they had been through, going through and healing from things like sexual abuse. It's hard for men to talk about that and to go to another black man who's a man who's a therapist and for that person to make fun of you, make you feel less than, when it's hard enough to open up and look for a therapist. And then what you get is ridicule from somebody who's supposed to be helping you. That is another reason why I think men are struggling to heal and they have, now we have more podcasts. We have these platforms where I think it at times can be a space for vulnerability, a, a place for healing, but in the world of the internet, is that really possible? And going back to the scarcity mindset, I believe men are functioning at a place that more, 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 there's never enough. 
And growing up, was there never enough food? Was there never enough money to pay bills? Those are things to think about that now as an adult, how are you functioning from that scarcity mindset? Do you ever feel like there's ever enough money? Are you chasing jobs? Are you chasing different things because the world tells you that you must be a provider? What about what's behind that? Okay. What about the person behind giving the paycheck, the child supports, being the provider, paying for everything? Oh, if he can't pay for everything, I don't want him. Can you believe we were on the date and he wanted me to go 50 50? Those are the conversations we're seeing on the podcast. And you know, that all gets buzzworthy, it goes viral, it's trending. But we don't have enough conversations. I think like the one we saw with Dr. Bryant and Cam Noon and even with, you know, Nick Cannon, more of the emotional intelligence, tapping into men being in survival mode and being able to discuss and confront how you can't always live your life like that and how it affects those around you, giving people bits and pieces of yourself out of fear, the fear of abandonment. Another thing of survival mode, what was your relationship like with your caregiver, your parents that now as an adult man, you're fearful of abandonment, somebody getting too close, trust taking from you. Was it that as a child, you were, you learned that I can't trust people because they take from me. And what was taken? Was it your youth? Was it your innocence? Was it just being able to be a young black boy? And now you have these men who, I'm a come for the woman a little bit. The women want them to be a certain way, but how does a man show up as a certain way in a marriage, a relationship where he has not seen those things? He has not seen healthy communication between a woman and a man or whatever you identify as. He has not seen emotional intelligence. He has not seen two people show up for one another. A lot of times in the black community, the relationships that we see are toxic. We don't really see our, our relationships. We don't see people getting married. We, didn't, we might not have grown up with that. We don't see healthy friendship dynamics. So now it's like as an adult man, I'm supposed to show up a certain way, but I never got that. And so where's the grace for me to grow and learn how to be that? Because if I'm not already that, then I'm worth nothing. That's what the women say. Correct me if I'm wrong. But all these men, Future, Cam Noon, Nick Cannon, a lot of these NFL players who have eight, nine, 10 kids are functioning out of survival mode and are functioning from a scarcity mindset. And I think in order for them to heal, be conditioned out of that, unlearn these maladaptive behaviors that were fostered into them as children, we have to create more healthy spaces. And that's not a podcast. We don't need another podcast. <laughs> that is checking into therapy, that is doing the work, finding someone that you trust to cry with, to be vulnerable with in a therapy session. I have so many men come to me and I often say, that based off the things you are sharing with me, I don't see any emotion because they were taught that I can't show emotion. They're just my thoughts as a therapist, but I wanna know your thoughts, what do you think? Do you recognize as a man or as a woman that you are functioning out of a scarcity survival mindset? And do you know what it looks like to thrive?